I think this is a question uh, at a very strategic uh, location in this series of talks. A lot has been said by various experts, uh, you know, about their favorite technologies, their suggestions um, uh, in terms of what India should do as far as the semiconductor manufacturing is concerned. So um, I'll try to bring a different perspective here. Uh, and we'll try to answer this question towards the end. But I'll also try to answer, you know, if India should buy a fab, what kind of fab it should buy, what one should do before buying a fab, what should be the timelines, um, and what fab one should not buy. Uh, I'll also use my experience, you know, having spent a few years with three eyes, Intel, Infineon, and um, an IBM and then, you know, uh, uh, of course, a lot of things which I learned while working on this DPR for the gallium nitride foundry, particularly focusing on the power thread, uh, talking to potential customers uh, and also assisting, uh, finally, I was uh, assisting or consulting a couple of startups in India to, uh, in a particular in the silicon space to come to a pace. So I'll use all of that experience uh, and we'll try to answer this question towards the end. Um, so to begin with, you know, let's try to uh, revisit the, the ecosystem, the microelectronics ecosystem. I mean, this is a very simplified picture, which you know you can see my scribbles here, which I was trying to jot down last night. The real ecosystem is rather complex, but I think we can use this ecosystem to understand, you know, what kind of players do exist. So I would say majority, majority there are two kind of players. One is, you know, you can call them design houses. Uh, they are the ones who are supplying designs to the system developers. These are the ones who are uh, developing custom designs and, uh, you know, as per the system developer needs. Uh, and, you know, every system developer would have a different need depending on what kind of uh, system they are developing. And, you know, they would translate that uh, uh, requirement to the design house. Design house will either develop the full chip, which you can call SOC or may develop an IP, uh, which someone else will integrate as part of the chip. So these design houses will send the, their designs to a fab and these design houses will either get the chip back or will get their IP qualified back from these fabs and they will transfer these IPs to the next level. The other part of this ecosystem, uh, you know, are those uh, who are actually selling uh, products in the market. These products could be a power SOC, chip, it could be an analog IC, it could be an automotive IC, uh, or it could be a discrete product. Now, these uh, suppliers, they can supply to a system developer depending on you know the need, but often these needs are pretty much similar. So they supply the same kind of things to several system developers, or they also put the same thing in, in open market from where anyone, any system developer or integrator can purchase and build their systems. So uh, rest of my you know, talk is built around this ecosystem. So can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So now the question is, you know, before we say that we should buy a fab or not buy a fab, let's try to understand who wants a fab, you know, particularly in India, except us, you know, we academicians. Uh, you know, when you say who wants a fab, the question is, you know, who would tape out a chip, right? So let's say if you talk about the electronics industry or the system developer in the previous slide, uh, no, they won't. Uh, they don't rely on a fab directly. They basically buy well-established commercial chips, or will get custom-made chips from you know uh, big players. Um, and let's say you know we talk about companies like Apple or Samsung, who are also system uh, developers, uh, would never go to a startup or or a, a, you know a startup who is relying on a new fab. You know, they will always go to a well-established player who is uh, getting their chips taping out at fabs like TSMC and having a second source as well as having its third source, ensuring there's no difference between the first source, second source and third source, right? So they won't go to a startup. Let's say uh, we talk about the startups, Indian Design House, you know, what uh, Sorup mentioned uh, and Udayan mentioned earlier about the, um, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the fabless companies, right? I mean, uh, yes, they can come to this new fab if it is cost effective. Uh, but the question is that if they go to a new fab, who wants their IP? I mean, mostly these design houses, uh, these fabulous companies are doing IPs and they're delivering these IPs to big players like, like Intel, Qualcomm and so on, who may not be doing their own IPs. I mean, I can give this one example when I was at Intel, 
at that time intel bought the usb3 ip from some other uh, company but the requirement is okay if it is ip it has to be qualified in the same fab so these startups and indian design houses or or fabless companies have to rely on the same fab from where you know rest of the ips are going to be you know qualified so um, so the only possibility is possibility of them to succeed in the market or to survive in the market to begin with is that they basically make their own products and sell their own products right um, and that will lead to something I'll, I'll talk about next right now then existing mnc's you know the companies like or the design centers like uh, like intel or or qualcomm or or even samsung or anyone else uh, in bangalore or in india or let's say the other ip developers like uh, like cadence and so on they already are tied up with tsmc and they are they have to deliver you know uh, uh, according to a given fab which the customer wants so they won't go to a fab you know a new fab in india now this is about you know the takers right the second question is what kind of chips we are talking about and that will try to answer the taker uh you know uh, uh roadblock that we see at at present so you know one kind of chip is is let's say digital kind of chips or processors in this particular segment you know you can't beat the big fishes like intel right uh, let's say we talk about custom socs custom socs are often demanded by let's say big players like apple and and samsung and they would go to uh, manufacturer they would go to designers who are already tied up with let's say uh, volume producers like tsmc and having second source and third source so it's not very easy for a fab to basically uh, attract the uh, the big players who are making these or supplying these custom socs to companies like apple and samsung now the third one comes is basically uh, which is let's say analog market power socs automotive and discrete and you know uh, particularly the analog power soc automotive and discrete has you know a equally big market you know in in countries like india and now this is something which is certainly possible to develop uh, you know where you can develop dedicated products small players and startups can pitch in and that's where you know i was talking about in the previous bullet point that uh if the startup or the indian design houses have to pitch in relying on a local fab then the starting point can be a market where they can directly supply uh they they can directly uh, develop dedicated products and supply to market or supply to uh, system developers next slide please okay now this is about the taker right let's also try to understand the supply and the demand gap i mean we have been talking about the need that india need this india need that india needs everything yes india needs everything but sustenance uh, is also very important and for that we have to understand the supply and the demand route i mean in this case the supply comes from these design houses the ic pro uh designers ic producers but the demand comes from the system manufacturer system developer and particularly from the from the market right so uh you know while we are only talking about the supply that we have to supply this in the market we have to supply gan fab in the market or we have to supply cmos in the market and so and so in the market you know what about demand so we have to keep in mind the demand aspect as well can we go to the next slide please okay so if you talk about the demand uh, let's try to understand you know uh, the demand for different fabs and uh, the hidden uh, bullet point here is that you know what comes in between like who is basically going to get their chips tape out in these kind of fabs and eventually supply to the next level which i covered in one of the slide previously so let's say we talk about you know fabs like 14 nanometer to 28 nanometer i mean these are too expensive they have very limited scope at present right uh, and possibly at present then there's no taker in india right i mean uh, first the demand has to be created i think in the beginning uh, mr marwa mentioned that uh, a lot of demand is being created by uh, pushing the electronic manufacturing and a lot of policies has been in place for for uh, having local electronics manufacturing i think that's a good move and that will certainly create a good demand for these kind of chips where let's say the local manufacturers would rely on the local designers to get their chips taped out on a local 14 nanometer and 28 nanometer fab to be integrated in the locally manufactured systems right but we are yet not there the other kind of fab possible is let's say 65 nanometer bcd i mean in particular in the bcd which is bipolar cmos dmos uh, sec sector which is you know which caters to analog power soc automotive and also in some cases to discrete you know 65 nanometer bcd is the most standard technology and 
uh, let's say this kind of technology also has very uh, low obsolescence rate. I mean, these kind of technologies stay for 10, 15, sometimes 20 years as well, right? So this is a market where there's easy to create demand. The local uh, design houses, startups, uh, fabulous companies can pitch in, can directly make these kind of products and kind of directly make, you know, supply that to the system manufacturers or to the market directly. Now, there's also a different route possible to have, uh, you know, uh, to start a fab in the country where, you know, people have already spoken about gallium nitride, photovoltaic, and this is something where the demand certainly exists. Now, the last one is the, you know, I make like R&D fab, which uh, Uden was talking about, but the question is for whom? I mean, if, if you're talking about R I make like R&D fab, if you don't have rest of the other fabs, you know, well, depending on what kind of R&D you want to do, I make does all kind of R&D. Let's say you want to do all kind of R&D. And if you don't have these fabs present in the country, you know, for whom you want to do R&D, right? I mean, then it just becomes a paper publishing uh, mechanism. Uh, and if you don't get a taker, you know, either you get a taker as I may get from the rest of the world or you get taker from these fabs, uh, you know, uh, which can come to I make like R&D fab in the country. Uh, uh, it would be too soon to start uh, I make like R&D fab. But I'm not denying for anything. I will answer this in the next slide. Now, the question is what to be kept in mind. Uh, of course, finance also comes into picture. So uh, the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, one should also keep in mind that, you know, you maximize takers for the least investment involved. And that's where the prioritization comes into picture. And the second aspect is that, you know, you have to keep balancing the demand and the supply. Can I have the last slide, please? Thank you. So uh, let me now summarize. Uh, so, you know, keeping all these aspects points uh, in mind, uh, the question uh, which I will now try to answer is what kind of fab we should buy or build and where. Uh, and I have put this in that particular priority order. So let's say the fabs resulting directly uh, a product to market, let's say gallium nitride, photovoltaic, etc. I would say build it as soon as possible using indigenous technology. I would, you know, I would uh, disagree a bit with Professor Mishra here and a couple of other speakers who said that we just buy from sources like Japan and uh, higher personals. I mean, our experience is that when you talk to people who are willing to license the technology, they either don't have the latest, the most mature, the most advanced technology, or they don't want to license the most matured, most latest, uh, most advanced technology. Second issue is that, of course, there's export limitations. So, you know, you, you can't get the best technology from wherever you want. So uh, you don't want to get into this kind of problem. And that's why I'm saying that, you know, rather relying on someone else to give you. And then after two years, after porting the, the, the process, you realize that it's not, you know, anywhere close to, let's say, the best available in the market, you know, and then you have to redo everything. You know, it's, it's better that you build your, uh, a fab with your own indigenous technology and parallelly promote local electronics development so that you can grow the number of takers in the country. Now, the second comes to the fab like 65 nanometer PCD, you know, which can cater to, as I said, analog power associate auto automotive and discrete products uh, where a demand can be immediately created, particularly because of the local manufacturing, which is going to start. Uh, the reason that these kind of products are often generic in nature, so the same kind of product can be catered to many, many different system integrators or system developers. Now, this is something, of course, you can't build locally, and this kind of technology is available. There's no expo export issue. People are willing to license the whole technology as it is, as they have. This is something which we can buy as soon as possible. Now comes the third one, which is the fab like 14 nanometer or 28 nanometer. As uh, Professor Saraswat mentioned in the beginning that, you know, going forward, buying a chip from, from outside India or let's say from other countries or any country would become difficult and difficult. And that's why, you know, I'm saying that, yes, we should also have a fab, which is something of the kind of 40, 14 nanometer or 28 nanometer. But to make it happen, first, we have to create a local demand. And I think this is something which Mr. Marwa also mentioned in the very beginning that, you know, uh, the reason many efforts failed in the past because every time the uh, the uh, the investor would ask whether there is a local demand first a local demand has to be creating by promoting local electronics development not integration development because if you if you go for integration then they will just rely on something which is available elsewhere and they will just do pcb integration here so that's why i'm saying local electronics development and once the demand starts increasing you know buy an established line or a technology
Now to support, you know, these three, one can have an R&D fab. That's about us, you know, where we are very much, I mean, we means academic community is very much interested. And, you know, there one can build uh, an IMIC Life Fab. But having an IMIC Life Fab without having the first three, you know, would not serve the purpose. But if we have the first three, or at least the first two and the, the, the third in making, you know, it would really make sense to have an R&D Fab, which should feed, you know, uh, the food to all these three fabs, right? So with this, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Mayak. So we had somebody who disagreed with Professor Mishra, and then we have somebody who posed a question for Uday. Uday, I'm sure you have thought through about uh, these points. So do you want to respond? 